good morning my dear students uh, till now uh, we have completed uh, uh, half of the unit of uh, structural analysis 2 uh, which is three hinged arches so uh, if you uh, uh, now if you see uh, briefly uh, what has uh, been done uh, in three hinged arches uh, you know we have defined what is an arch then uh, the types of arches we have seen and then we have gone for uh, what is meant by a theoretical arch and how do you relate a theoretical arch and the actual arch with a theorem uh, called eddy's theorem then we have gone for solving three hinged arches which is a determinate one uh, hence the solution process was a bit easy when compared to two hinged arches uh, now you will be uh, seeing uh, you know uh, two hinged arch solutions uh, how uh, they they will be uh, a bit difficult than uh, three hinged arches anyhow uh, we have solved some examples in three hinged arches also and I gave you a, a worksheet also uh, as a tutorial sheet uh, for which a one week of time for submission is given. So all of you uh, 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 do it uh, uh, on a white sheet, solve all the problems uh, given there uh, in the worksheet, then make it a PDF and uh, upload it uh, in your uh, now when you open the assignment uh, you have the option for submission so upload your PDFs uh, I'll uh, no, um, uh, I'm going to validate them right that was happened till now uh, let's proceed for uh, the next half of the unit uh, of uh, unit one of structural analysis 2 subject so it is two hinged arches so we have uh, defined the arches and even we have defined uh, uh, now what is a three hinged arch and what is a, a two hinged arch and what is a single hinged arch and a hingeless arch uh, based on the type of the uh, arches uh, right so under the types of arches we have come across this type uh, two hinged arches right uh, if you uh, say in terms of determinacy uh, if, if you categorize in terms of determinate uh, arch indeterminate arch so uh, two hinged arch will come under indeterminate arch reason is very clear uh, that uh, the number of uh, unknown reactions uh, available in the arch are four whereas the number of equations are only three equilibrium equations are only three so you have a degree of indeterminacy value of one okay so what, what do you need uh, if you want to solve such uh, indeterminate structures is uh, you need one extra equation in excess of uh, equilibrium equations so you have already three equilibrium equations available with you so if you are able to formulate one more equation that is uh, that is called you know uh, compatible uh, equation uh, right compatibility equation uh, from the compatibility conditions uh, if you are able to develop one more equation then you are able to solve the two hinged arches so uh, it's very uh, regular procedure so what do you do uh, to develop that extra equation uh, in addition to equilibrium equations okay uh, let's see uh, th that we will uh, come across in the 
coming lessons right so uh, the topics that we are going to cover in this uh, two hinged arches uh, or we uh, will you know, concentrate on determination of horizontal thrust, bending moment, normal thrust, and radial shear. Right. Why uh, particularly horizontal thrust you will be knowing in the coming uh, sessions. Right. We will talk about rib shortening and even temperature stresses also. Right, we'll talk about tied arches and we'll talk about uh, hingeless arches. The other name is uh, fixed arches. And we will not have any analytical question from this. It's just the, uh, the procedure to solve fixed arches will be discussed because it is beyond the scope of manual calculation. That's the only reason uh, why it is mentioned uh, from JNT UK that you don't need to solve uh, analytical question. Reason behind this is, it is beyond the um, the manual, uh, scope of manual calculation, okay? Right, so these are the topics that uh, we will be discussing uh, in this, um, no, uh, two hinged arches, right? Let's, uh, 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 just uh, see uh, the introductory part uh, about the two hinged arches. So uh, as I was telling that uh, mainly there are three types of arches used in practice. Uh, that is three hinged, two hinged and fixed arches. Other way, other way called hingeless arches, right? So in the early part of 19th century, uh, three hinged arches were commonly used. Reason behind that is it's very uh, known fact that three hinged arches are easy to solve. And you you can uh, design them with uh, full confidence. Okay. So that's uh, the analysis is easy because it is determinate structure. But however, uh, as the uh, structural analysis uh, is progressing, uh, uh, new developments, uh, new methods, uh, no, uh, or uh, when new methods are available, the people started uh, moving towards indeterminate structures. So uh, late 19th century, uh, the engineers used to adopt two hinged arches or even fixed arches also. So uh, two hinged arch just now uh, discussed that it is statically indeterminate structure to first degree. So degree of static indeterminacy of two hinged arch is one, right? So if, if you want to solve an indeterminate structure, what you do is you need to first uh, select uh, the redundant among the reactions available. Okay. So if you just uh, no, uh, analyze that in a simple way, so support A will have VA and HA, right. Then support B will have VB and uh, HB, right? So these are the possible uh, reactions that we have, right? If you use Sigma FX zero, so the final result, what we are going to have is HA is equal to HB, is equal to H. Oh, let me just clear that uh, the extra line that appeared. Right, so if you apply Sigma FX zero, 
so you are going to have one unknown instead of two unknowns so now how many unknowns you have three only va vb and h remember you have used one equilibrium equation so how many are left over there are only two equilibrium equations left over they are what sigma of y0 and sigma m0 two equilibrium equations are left over and there are three unknowns still there va vb h so with two equations you are able to solve two unknowns only so one is redundant reaction among the three any one of the three unknowns will become redundant it depends on the user and it depends on the problem solution process right so you have to choose the redundant uh, among yourselves right so it's a very common practice and will be easy when you pick h as redundant right so what is now h is redundant means excess reaction so choosing uh, uh, this h as redundant now we will uh, solve for remaining two unknowns with the two equilibrium equations that is va and vb and to solve for h no we need uh, the excess equation that is the compatibility condition or the compatibility equation so how do you develop that equation is by there are many methods to develop that so here what we are going to use is method of least work nothing but the extension of uh, the uh, strain energy uh, theorems uh, uh, application of strain energy theorems uh, which is by castigliano's uh, first theorem or second theorem okay so this is uh, uh, how we are going to proceed for uh, two hinged arch solutions now the reason is very clear uh, why uh, such procedure is required because the two hinged arch is statically indeterminate structure okay so that two for degree one means what you need one extra equation other than your equilibrium equations so how do you develop that equation extra equation is by uh, using castigliano's theorem uh, nothing but by by the extension of that uh, castigliano's theorem or the other way you can say application of castigliano's theorem uh, named as method of least work okay so that we will see now right so to solve for horizontal reaction or horizontal thrust what we say because it is compression uh, as it acts towards the support so h will uh, act towards the surface support hence uh, this is always you know compression that's why uh, we call this as horizontal thrust thrust uh, nothing but compression okay so horizontal reaction uh, other way called as horizontal thrust okay right so uh, let us see uh, the theorem of least work uh, how do you develop the extra equation that is required for solving two hinged arches right first uh, let us go with the statement right the partial derivative of strain energy 
of a statically indeterminate structure with respect to statically indeterminate action should vanish means zero okay right so we have uh, studied these castigliano's theorems theorem one and two in structural analysis one you should recall them so go back to your uh, essay one uh, uh, stuff and uh, see uh, what uh, this theorem is okay <coughs> so uh, partial derivative of strain energy strain energy is denoted as capital u with respect to uh, a force acting on a body will give you deflection uh, of our displacement of that body uh, of that point on the body at the same point and in the same direction of the force applied so this is castigliano's theorem so what uh, the theorem of least work says uh, the if if the body is in equilibrium and uh, if there is a redundant uh, acting on a structure the work done by the redundant should be uh, zero okay uh, so in the other way uh, the partial derivative of strain energy of the uh, body with respect to redundant uh, should be minimum minimum in the sense zero okay so equation form it is dou u by dou h is equal to zero right so this is uh, the theorem of least work which uh, in turn came from the castigliano's theorem which in turn came from strain energy concept uh, application of strain energy okay so we have exclusively strain energy chapter uh, the the lessons that we have uh, now taught uh, in structural analysis one uh, uh, for strain energy exclusively there uh, we have discussed all this uh, strain energy calculations uh, based on different actions also so that we are using now if you recall uh, what we have done in uh, structural analysis one i think you remember this equation strain energy due to bending is equal to integral mx square dx what we have used by 2ei okay where i am using ds here reason behind i am now dealing with arches not the beams okay where beams have only x dimension uh, now you have both x and y dimension for arches okay so an arch will have both x and y if you take a point on the arch so you have both x and uh, y whereas if you say there is a beam uh, no you have only x dimension so if you take a section uh, you just say x only okay so whereas if you take a section on uh, arch uh, it will be uh, like uh, x and y that's why we will write uh, ds okay which means what uh, the the length along the arch is ds uh, an infinitely small uh, portion of arch uh, length is called ds whereas what is dx in beams it is an infinitely small dimension along x direction of the beam right okay so this is what is strain energy equation taken from the strain energy chapter what we have discussed ex extensively right uh, now you need to supply uh, or substitute uh, for uh, the different quantities in strain energy and what you need to substitute this 
u value that is strain energy value into this theorem of least work and that will give you uh, an equation for h what we want finally is one additional equation for solving h value that means redundant reaction excess reaction what we call is redundant okay right so um, if you uh, see this uh, strain energy equation now mx is replaced with m dash into hy now what is m dash and why mx is written like this okay right so m dash is nothing but beam moment okay beam moment right if, if you if you see here there is an arch and there is a beam okay right let us uh, have some loads uh, on the arch same load on the beam okay so let us say this is a load on the arch then let us say same uh, load is acting on the beam okay no change just similar everything is same same span same load everything is same except the structure is different here it is a beam and here it is an arch okay so what do you have you have reactions here vertical horizontal whereas you have only vertical reaction in beam no horizontal reaction is possible for beam okay so now what is the difference here you take a section and write mx for arch if you write what do you write v into some distance x okay this let us say v this is also v right so v into x and load w into x into x by 2 okay that's you right same here v into x and w into x into x by 2 even in case of beam then what is the difference then you have h into y in mx equation of arch okay that is the difference so what do you write all this v into x w into x into x by 2 i am denoting that as m dash okay so mx equation if you see of an arch is equal to now v into x just for example i'm writing minus w into no x square by 2 minus h into y okay right this now this term is even you get it from a beam also so v into x w into x square by 2 is moment from a beam of similar dimension similar load so that i am writing as m dash minus h into y is now moment from horizontal reaction this is mx of arch so mx of arch is equal to means what bending moment at any location of the arch is equal to bending moment in a beam of similar dimension and similar load minus h into y that is what is used here just for simplification only to simplify your uh, no uh, formula to have a, a formula uh, form a simplified form right right so now uh, remember we are using uh, the condition uh, to find uh, the equation for uh, for solving for redundant h that equation is do u by do h is equal to zero is the additional condition and uh, the condition is not sufficient we we want uh, to make it as an equation so by substituting for u what is u strain energy due to bending and in that mx is moment at a section of an arch is replaced by uh, m dash minus hy just to simplify your uh, equation 
and uh, now if you substitute for u so do by do h of what is u now mx integral mx square ds by 2ei is equal to 0 so substituting u you get this one okay now you substitute for mx in this equation okay right so that we will see what happens so 1 by 2e i is common uh, it's a constant value get out of this integration and dou by dou h you send it inside so there is dou by dou h of mx square is there so it will become 2mx into dou by dou h of mx into ds is equal to 0. Now what is mx? m dash minus hy dou by dou h of what is mx again? m dash minus hy ds 1 by ei okay even you if you have uh, uh, this 1 by ei uh, you can uh, if it is constant if you feel you can uh, take it outside or if you say it is a variable you can bring, bring it inside the integration that's your wish okay and it depends on the problem okay right let us see uh, what happens when you proceed with dou by dou h in this uh, equation right m dash minus hy remains as it is dou by dou h of m dash minus hy you need to do now so m dash is a constant uh, because you are differentiating with respect to h remember so m dash will not have any h that i told you in the previous slide you you see it here so when you say beam so you don't have any h in this uh, uh, term within the braces it is just vx minus wx square by 2 no horizontal reaction in m dash so that is a constant with respect to h i'm talking about okay right so uh, uh, that is zero okay if you differentiate any constant it will be zero okay now what is dou by dou h of minus h y dou by dou h of h is one so minus y is the value okay right so ds by e i is remains there so now if you split this minus m dash into y ds by e i you have one term there are two terms here multiply this with this and multiply this with this you get two terms so one is minus another one is plus so negative term you take it to the right hand side that is this one so m dash into y into ds by ei comes to the right hand side don't forget uh, you are in uh, you are under integration and the second term is minus of minus plus h into y into y so h y square ds by e i okay that is plus so keep it the left hand side right so you need h so bring h outside so the remaining term will goes to the denominator this will goes to the denominator when you take h outside right now this is the equation for h okay straight away to get horizontal thrust so what is the equation integral m dash y ds by ei if 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 you feel ei is constant you can simply cancel out ei because it is there in the numerator and the denominator if you if you say ei is variable then you have to keep it uh, inside the integration okay right so h you can calculate only with this uh, formula at integral m dash y ds uh, I, I ignore ei uh, treating that as constant throughout the structure so divided by integral y square ds so my simplified formula for h is equal to simplified formula i'm talking about integral m dash y ds divided by integral 
y square ds so this is a formula that we use now you can see numerator consists of load quantities denominator consists of only geometry only y is there there is no load uh, related term in the denominator so numerator is consisting of m dash that means what you need to do to solve for h whenever an arch is given a two hinged arch is given with some load first you need to write m dash means what beam moment treating that as a beam taking same loads write m dash value and now you substitute for the geometry of the arch if it is circular arch you, you substitute for circular geometry that i have given here if it is parabolic you substitute parabolic geometry these will help you to solve for circular geometry these two things so what is ds uh, is again r into d theta uh, i think you remember this uh, you know if it is arch you take part of the arch so if it is d theta it is radius radius of the arch ds is the arc length so you have relation between these three so ds is r into d theta so that if you replace here your ds will become d theta so always remember if you are solving for circular geometry we always uh, know deal with r and theta right uh, it, it will be easy similarly what is y it is a cartesian coordinate right you need to replace that with the polar coordinate system so y is equal to h minus r into 1 minus cos theta this is also the well-known relation when we discuss about uh, the uh, geometry uh, properties of geometry right for circular geometry and uh, parabolic geometry okay so to uh, solve for uh, two hinged arches uh, now you understand um, uh, how uh, it is different from a three hinged arch okay so you have uh, all four equations in three hinged arch so where solving four unknowns is a little bit easy uh, whereas solving for uh, horizontal uh, reaction uh, in two hinged arch is a bit difficult it involves you know, mathematical formulations where you need to do uh, integrations okay right so this is uh, the formula that we are going to use uh, in further uh, uh, problem solutions okay right so we have started with uh, uh, the castiglianos theorem and application of castiglianos theorem uh, is theorem of least work that is do u by do h is zero this is what is the additional condition uh, to solve for the extra unknown uh, that is uh, horizontal reaction in the arch h okay so uh, u uh, is you know from uh, uh, strain energy due to bending means what um, the other strain energies like strain energy due to uh, shear and strain energy due to you know axial load all are uh, neglected okay that you should remember here uh, we are only considering strain energy in the arch stored due to bending moment only right that is uh, uh, replaced uh, mx is replaced with m dash into uh, m dash minus h into y then substitution into the condition will lead to a simplified formula for h directly so h is equal to integral m dash y ds divided by integral y square ds okay where uh, what is the condition here treating flexural rigidity is constant ei flexural rigidity is constant throughout the arch okay
right so that's all with the uh, development of equation for solving for h in the two hinged arches thank you